on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Nothing in praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at my life with my own eyes. Here are some examples. Exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. We need an official declaration to fix the people to our cause. The Hessians have arrived. General Washington said that there are 18,000 troops. The time for talk is past. It's time to act. We must all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. June 1776. Dearest Mother, In the last Congress, some of the delegates believed Dr. Franklin and Mr. John Adams were plotting treason against the King. However, this Congress hasn't a single delegate still loyal to the Crown. James and Henri have journeyed to New York where James hopes to interview General Washington for the Gazette. Provisions are every bit as low as morale, to answer your question bluntly. Provisions, morale, low. Ugh, not so hard. Oh, sorry. You're with the Pennsylvania Gazette, aren't you? We've met before in Philadelphia and Boston. Perhaps you can answer a question for me. What in the world is going on at the State House? From what I understand, long, drawn-out arguments. We need an official declaration to fix the people to our cause. The publication of Common Sense changed many men's minds in our favor, but it's time for Congress to act, to exploit public opinion. We need a complete united front. See for yourself. Here. Who are they? Hessians. Yes, what? German soldiers. There's hundreds of them. And more on the way. King George III has made a deal with German princes to hire 18,000 troops. But General Washington, you'll be outnumbered. What will you do? do against the British and the Hessians, not without help from Congress. But what can Congress do? They can issue a proclamation of independence. Then the French government may be persuaded to send troops to help us face this onslaught. We've got to get back home to tell Dr. Franklin about this. Excuse me, but we need our horse right away. What's your hurry? We have to tell Dr. Franklin about the Hessians. You mean Ben Franklin? We have to tell Dr. Franklin so that Congress can get the French to help us. Henri? Well, in that case, I'll get right on it. Hey, let me go! Watch out, Henri, they're Tories! Get the boy. They want to warn Franklin about their new troops. <gasps> Never mind him. Let's lock this one in the barn. What is it, lad? James! He's been taken prisoner by the blacksmith and some men. Who is James? He's my friend. We have to go tell Dr. Franklin the Hessians are here so Congress can help. And these men want to stop us. Tories. They have him in there. <clears throat> Let's force it open. What are you doing? That's my stable. We're looking for a boy. Nothing in there but horses. What did you do to him? 
What is this little fellow yammering on about? You can't do that! You just did! That's private property. And that's a human being. James! And you're a Tory kidnapper. You can't do anything to me. I don't know what I can ever do to repay you. I do. Get your horse and ride like the wind to tell Dr. Franklin the news. We need some help from Congress. Dr. Franklin! Dr. Franklin! Dory's got James! The Hessians have arrived! She wouldn't let him out! Good heavens. They tried to stop us. General Washington said that there are 18,000 troops. They locked James up in a barn. Hessians lock you in a barn? Are you trying to worry us to death? Henri saved my life. You look a fright. That blacksmith was a Tory. He didn't want us to bring the news to Dr. Franklin. I shan't let you out of my sight for fear of the trouble you find. Start over, James. What did the Tories not want you to tell me? King George has sent 18,000 troops, the Hessians. We saw them arrive. General Washington wants Congress to- Yes, I know. A resolution on independence. We must try harder to get Congress moving or we'll be finding Hessians in our beds. The chair recognizes Richard Henry Lee of Virginia. Mr. President, I would offer three resolutions. That the colonies are in fact free and independent states absolved of all allegiance to Great Britain. That the independent states seek to form foreign alliances. And that the independent states establish a plan of confederation. I second all three resolves. <laughs> In the chambers. Order! He's done it. Lee of Virginia. What a headline that's going to make. What an act of treason against the king. Treason? Your king has sent German troops to attack us. I want to hear two. Henri, be careful. Ah! <laughs> Mr. Dickinson, I'm with the Pennsylvania Gazette. How nice for you. What are the hopes for passing the independence resolution? Few and far between. Independence is dangerous and impossible. Could you explain that answer, sir? Dangerous because without the protection of the crown, the frontier will fall to the Indians. And a European power more ruthless than England will gain ownership of the colonies. Impossible because only New England and the South want independence. The middle colonies, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania will never vote for it. But Thomas Paine's common sense has changed a lot of people's minds. Common sense is anything but. And just as Mr. John Dickinson tried to infer that Paine's common sense is a waste of time... I don't think infer is the word you want to use. Yes, it is. She's right. Well, it sounds good. Words have a great power, James. I know. I'm a journalist. You have to be more careful in choosing them. What would be the right word? Suggest? Doesn't sound as good. But it communicates your meaning. Even with the right word, this article's no good. I don't know whether Congress is going to adopt the resolution. Dr. Franklin is having a secret meeting upstairs about just that subject. So it is our job to come up with a written statement of independence on which Congress is to vote. So you'd better start working on it, John. Not me, Franklin. My shrill insistence and lack of tact have made me too obnoxious. If the others know it's my hand on the pen, they'll tear it to shreds. Whom do you propose to write it? You, Dr. Franklin. You are the most famous writer on the continent. I pass. I write for the amusement of my readers and myself. I will not write something only to have a Congress rewrite it. What about Roger Sherman or Robert Livingston? They're on the committee as well. They can barely write their names. Jefferson, you have a fine mind and a gift for language. Me? You. It will be an honor to turn what talents I have to this cause. 
I only hope I prove worthy. Where's Mr. Jefferson going in such a hurry? He's got a lot of writing to do. <sighs> Drat! Have to do better than that. Go away! Just want to ask him some questions. He's too busy working. Working on what? I think I know a way to find out. How? Never mind. Just wait for me back at the print shop. Away. Chambermaid. Oh, all right. Let yourself in. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to destroy the... When in the course of human events it becomes imperative to cut asunder the... When in the course of human events it becomes desirable for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another... <gasps> it's sedition! He's writing an explanation for... Breaking off all ties to the crown. Finally, a declaration of independence. But why does he keep starting over? Why not just write it and have done? Remember what I said about the power of words? But doesn't he know that action is needed now? It is important to take the necessary time to choose the correct words. Especially when defying a king. And do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Order! The chair recognizes John Dickinson of Pennsylvania. James, look! Those men need help! We don't have time. We're already late for the reading of the Declaration. And this rain doesn't help. But they'll get soaked! So will we! Look, that one man has a collar. He's a man of God. We're stopping. All right. Need some help? Bless you, lad. What we need is transportation to the State House. Hop in. That's just where we're headed. Peace and prosperity would be the benefits of independence. Unlike my esteemed colleague, Mr. Dickinson, I have nothing but contempt for the present situation and nothing but hope for the... We've been detained by the elements. Order! Please explain this interruption. I'm the Reverend John Witherspoon, and we are the newly elected New Jersey delegation. We've been instructed by the New Jersey Provincial Convention to support the resolution for independence. This is a most welcome interruption. Are we late for the vote? Thank heavens, no. Thank the heavens, indeed. But thank these young people. Without their help, we might have missed it. I can't thank you enough. We are happy to have been of service. Can we stay and watch? Please, take the seats behind mine. But you must not tell anyone what is said here. All in favor? All opposed. That was only a straw vote to see where we stand. Well, only Delaware and Pennsylvania stand against the independence resolution. But in order to adopt it, the vote must be unanimous. The actual vote will take place tomorrow morning. Until then, we are dismissed. Rat! If only Caesar Rodney of Delaware were here, he'd vote with us and bring Delaware to our side. Caesar Rodney is bedridden. Wait a minute. James, could you and Moses race to Delaware to visit a sick friend? <laughs> A 
If it's thieves, I'm alone. You'll only have me to rob. <laughs> We're not robbers. Ah, uh, then you've come to escort me to the next world. No, just Philadelphia. That's a far cry from heaven. Dr. Franklin sent us. With news of the independence resolution? The vote is tomorrow, and your vote is very important. Help me out of bed, gentlemen. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if you rode in the carriage with us? Speed is everything. <laughs> Thanks again, fellows. <laughs> that cough sounds bad. We'd better try to keep up with him. I don't understand why he wouldn't let us take it. Now you've seen a real hero. <laughs> Betty Rodney. <coughs> I've got to make it inside. Oh. <laughs> As I believe the voice of my constituents and of all sensible and honest men is in favor of independence, my own judgment concurs with them. I vote for independence. It's unanimous. The resolution on independence passes. He made it. You got the yes vote for Pennsylvania? Mr. Dickinson saw the inevitability of our cause and stayed home. At last, America is independent. Mark my words. This day, July 2nd, will be remembered as the most revered day in American history, an occasion for games, sports, bells, bonfires, and illumination. In accordance with the wishes of the delegates, let us now debate Mr. Jefferson's declaration. Debate what? The time for talk is past. It's time to act. The bonfires and illuminations may have to wait, John. The Congress wants to quibble over the words. But you're cutting my document to pieces. I count 30 deletions and changes so far. More than a quarter of the length is gone. Your pride is understandable, Mr. Jefferson. You have written a magnificent document. But it's vital for us to be united as we take this drastic step. The chair recognizes Mr. Rutledge of South Carolina. Why do they have to cut the life out of the Declaration? It's fine as it is. It goes back to what I've said before. The power of words. They are choosing a set of words for which men will surely fight and die. Great care must be taken. There. A signature big enough for King George to see it all the way from London. Dr. Franklin? We must all hang together or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. That these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, 
and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And there you have it, men, our Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. Independence! Freedom! Amazing! That one document can have this effect on tired, dispirited soldiers. This is madness! Where will it end? In independence? If the purpose of the Declaration is to gain popular support for the cause of independence, it looks like it's working. This will make it easier for the United States of America to appeal to the French for military support. I have to admit it, Sarah. You and Mr. Jefferson have taught me a lesson I'll never forget about the power of words. Independence! Yeah.